Good evening. My name is Alexander Wierzejski and this is Poland Daily News. The Polish Parliament today passed legislation that will make it possible to build a border wall on its border with Belarus. The largest opposition party, led by uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Donald Tusk, voted against the new bill. The MPs of the Civic Platform Party took the decision that they will not support the construction of a border wall at a meeting last night. They don't want to build any wall. If they wanted to, they would start doing it. I would know how to do it. I have some experience in building various, sometimes even very complicated infrastructure in Poland. As Katarzyna Lubnauer explains, the opposition doesn't believe in the effectiveness of the solution proposed by the government. According to her, more attention should be paid to increasing international pressure on Belarus. We're against giving such prerogatives to the government, to spend a billion and 615 million Polish zlotys without any tenders, without any social control. The situation is getting worse every day, and this is why the Polish state has to react. Also thinking about the security of Europe, says Bartłomiej Wróblewski from the Law and Justice Party. Unregulated migration is the great challenge of our times. It is why many countries have erected walls or similar installations. The construction of the wall is also supported by the Confederation. The raison d'etat and the safety of Poles are the most important things here. And in this matter, we have to stand on the side of the Polish state. 482 attempts to illegally enter the territory of Poland were registered today. Eight illegal migrants were detained, six of them citizens of Iraq and two citizens of Iran. The migrants trying to cross into Poland illegally from Belarus say Polish border guards are pushing them back over the frontier, leaving them hiding in forests along the border. Some of the migrants claim that they have had enough of the situation and wish to return back to their home countries. Mohamed, a 26-year-old Yemeni migrant, flew to Belarus from Malaysia in August with the hope of making it through Poland on his way to Western Europe. He says he was forced across the border 11 times by Polish or Belarusian guards, had most of his belongings stolen, and was cold, thirsty and hungry with only leaves to eat. A Polish border guard spokesperson said that in general, staff provide medical help to all those in need, including resuscitation or providing access to paramedics, and that they do accept applications for international protection. A former travel agent, Mohamed is among thousands of people from the Middle East, Africa and Afghanistan who have tried to enter Poland from Belarus in recent weeks, but claims to have faced stiff opposition from the Polish border guards. He told us he will bring us to the UN camp, so they lie to us. We go with them. And then directly push us inside the border. Go, go, in. and then they take our our phones. They break our SIM cards. Charities say the migrants have faced harrowing conditions on the two countries' shared border. Send me to the airport. Okay, I did mistake. I am illegal here. I don't have documents. I don't have passport. I don't have visa in your country. Bring me to the jail. Let me die there. But don't make me die there. The European Union's Executive Commission blames Belarus for deliberately orchestrating the flow to put pressure on the bloc in retaliation for sanctions it has slapped on Minsk over human rights abuses. An August order from the Polish Interior Ministry made it easier to transport migrants without the appropriate papers to stay in Poland, back to the border. According to the Polish border guard, over 15,000 attempts to cross the border have taken place since early August, mostly by Iraqi, Afghan and Syrian citizens. Those attempts are becoming more frequent, climbing above 500 a day in recent weeks. German politicians are calling for the EU to place sanctions on the Belarusian airline that is used for the regime in Minsk to fly in the thousands of illegal migrants from Africa and the Middle East, who are then pushed by Belarusian security services towards the country's border with Poland, Latvia and Lithuania. The demand for sanctions comes as the number of migrants arriving to Germany through the new route is growing rapidly. In a swelling refugee camp in eastern Germany, a few kilometers from the Polish border, more than 100 refugees arrive each day as news of the Belarus route to Europe spreads around the Middle East. Authorities in Brandenburg, the German state that is housing most of the new arrivals, are calling for tougher action against what they see as Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko's hybrid war against the European Union. Michael Stubgen, the eastern state's interior minister, says that they are just managing the symptoms here. The real problem is the human trafficking organized by the Belarus regime. As far as we know, the human trafficking has been increased. We noticed that in the increased numbers here, in the beginning it was mostly people from Iraq, 90% of them males traveling alone. Now it has been diversified. There are people from Afghanistan, but also from Iran meaning the human trafficking in Belarus is on the rise, widened also to other countries. Facing crippling sanctions over the crackdown that followed last year's stolen election victory, Lukashenko has opened his country's borders to much of the Middle East and Africa, knowing that many will use the opportunity to enter the EU via Poland. 
In August, 200 arrived at the camp from Belarus, Stupkin said. Now, 100 to 150 are arriving each day. Tomorrow I will address the German foreign minister with the following demands. One, and this is only a short-term solution, a landing ban in all of Europe for all airlines that contribute to this human trafficking. And we know which airline we are talking about. Poland and Lithuania have erected fences along their border with Belarus, but few refugees want to stop in either country. Under EU asylum rules, they have to stay in the first EU country they are registered in. So refugees wanting to stay in Germany need to dodge the authorities. The Norwegian police have identified the man who killed five people at random in Kongsberg yesterday using a bow and arrows as a 37-year-old Danish man who had converted to Islam. The police had earlier been in contact with the man due to reports about his radicalization. The five people murdered, four women and one man, were between 50 and 70 years old. Two people, including an off-duty police officer, were wounded in the Wednesday evening attacks. The suspect had converted to Islam, and police had been worried about signs of his radicalization, regional police chief Ole Bedrup Severud told a news conference. As previously announced, the suspect is a 37-year-old Danish national residing in Norway. Police have previously been in contact with the man in relation to trouble connected to radicalization. We haven't registered anything in regards to him in 2021, but previously. He also said it was too early to determine whether the attacks should be investigated as an act of terrorism. We are conducting an investigation. We feel confident that the perpetrator was alone and we don't have any information that would indicate otherwise. But the investigation is ongoing to make sure that's the case. The suspect lived in Kongsberg, which is 68 kilometers southwest of the capital, Oslo, and has a population of about 28,000 people. The suspect is in custody and is believed to have acted alone. He was cooperating with police and had implicated himself in the attacks. That's the news and I wish you a very good evening.